Welcome to First Church of Christ in Longmeadow in the United Church of Christ. I'm Pastor Marisa Brown Ludwig, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our service this weekend, our New Year's weekend service. This is um, a time to wish you a happy new year to all. May 2021 truly be a better year for all of us and all around the world. This is the second Sunday after Christmas, and so I am joyous to be welcoming a special guest preacher today, my colleague and friend, Rabbi James Green. Welcome, Rabbi James. Across our social distancing during this quarantine time, we come to you by live stream on Facebook and YouTube, and also through Longmeadow Cable Television. And so I welcome you from wherever you are seeing us and however you are joining us today. We are an open and affirming community that celebrates the extravagant welcome of Jesus Christ. He didn't ask people to be sure about him before he ate with them and taught them and healed them, and neither do we. And so today we say you are welcome no matter your age, your economic status, the color of your skin, your gender expression, or who you love. In the United Church of Christ we say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. As is our first church tradition, the camels and the wise ones are on their journey from the east to Bethlehem, from the back of our church to the front. We have one more week to go. So um, we need to see where they are today as they come near to Epiphany, which will come next weekend. So where are they today? I invite you now to come into quiet, to let the busyness of your lives fall away, allowing us to melt into the present moment in which our God may speak. In our worship this morning, we greet the new year, recognizing yet again the turning of the cycle of life. There is comfort in knowing that the seasons change, that there is a time for every purpose. Our God assures us today that God does not leave us where we are, but calls us forth into who we may yet be. See, I am making all things new, God says. Do not despair, for I am with you in everything. I am the beginning and the end. I am the light that comes into the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. Let us now enter into worship. Please, will you join me in our call to worship? Your part will be on your screen. Light looked down and saw darkness. I will go there, said light. Peace looked down and saw war. I will go there, said peace. Love looked down and saw hatred. I will go there, said love. So the Lord of light, the Prince of Peace, the King of Love came down and crept in beside us. Please won't you lift your voices with me from wherever you are and sing our opening hymn with me. You'll see the words on your screen.
Friends, won't you please join me in saying our opening prayer? The words will be on your screen. O God of renewal and recreation, as we observe the turning of the year, we know that all time is still in you. While we feel shaped by the sands sifting in the hourglass, we know that it is the molding of your spirit that truly brings us into who you have made us to be. Be with us this day and in all the days ahead. Give us the resolve to be still. Grant us the courage to move at your word. Gift us the faith to continue on until all that we trust is true, becomes visible before us. Amen. And now, a prayer of illumination as we prepare for our scripture and our preaching. O Holy One, may the light of your star illumine our hearts, that we may truly perceive your word in scripture, song, prayer, and preaching. Amen. The first reading is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to throw away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all shall eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. The second reading is taken from the book of Revelation. Chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne, saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with him. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Here ends the readings, and may thanks be to God. Blessings to each of you. My name is Rabbi James Green, and although I live locally and am part of the local interfaith community, professionally I am the executive director at Camp Laurelwood, the Jewish residential agency that is based in Madison, Connecticut. It is such a gift to be able to preach this morning, 
especially for First Church, which holds a place in my heart with your loving community and your exceptional clergy leader, Reverend Marisa. Thank you. Wherever you all are this morning, I hope that you are safe and well, and that you feel the connection that this holy community sends out into the world. Ecclesiastes is the reading for this morning, and it is a beautiful, if yet complicated, text, especially perfect for the new year, which is full of possibility and opportunity, and also this year with complexity and challenge. In the Jewish community, the book of Ecclesiastes is read during Sukkot, the fall harvest festival, which is a time of connecting to the outdoors and is also a time of intense joy. As an avid backpacker, a cross-country skier, and a snowshoer, I definitely get the connection to joy and nature. In fact, in the Talmud, a 7th century work of Jewish law, it tells us that a person who has never seen the rituals performed in the temple during Sukkot has never really known true joy. And that is quite a statement to make. So I was thinking this week about what that must have been like and whether this joy that is talked about could be blunted by life circumstance. Because maybe the year has not been so good. Maybe your harvest was not as successful as you wanted. Maybe your family had been sick or you had lost a loved one. Maybe you were living in the time of a global pandemic and you didn't get to spend time with friends in the woods exploring this incredible creation that God has made for us. If you were looking for optimism in Ecclesiastes, you maybe went to the wrong book. In Jewish tradition, this book of Kohelet, the Hebrew name for Ecclesiastes, is attributed to King Solomon in his old age. With this context, the themes of the book, futility, injustice, fear of meaninglessness, perhaps all seem more appropriate. Even more appropriate is that we are reading this book during this time of year when our own days are getting shorter and colder as we dive into winter. We are reading the words of a man who is looking back upon his life and wondering whether it is all for naught. Rabbi Hanan Schlesinger wrote that, quote, this is the profoundly pessimistic premise that suffuses the book of Ecclesiastes. The book struggles with the meaning of life in light of death. Again and again, it repeats this refrain, vanity, vanity, all is vanity, as it catalogs our efforts to provide our lives with a sense of meaning by building monuments that will outlast us. We carry within us a deep sense of humiliation in the face of death. It is degrading to live and then to be gone forever and ever. And so we have an existential need to make a mark that will last beyond us. How does the author of Ecclesiastes ask us to respond to this reality? They call us to remember that when we act purposefully, we can find deep and powerful meaning. A season is set for everything, Ecclesiastes says, a time for every experience under heaven. The beginning of the third chapter is perhaps the most famous section of this book, thanks not uh, exactly to King Solomon, but rather to Pete Seeger's song, Turn, 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 which was written in the 1950s, but made famous through a recording of the birds a couple of decades later. The part of the book that I actually find most powerful is just a few lines down from that in our reading. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A quote that I often read at the unveiling of a headstone. Although Jewish law asks people to mourn for 11 months, it also reminds us that there is a purpose to living and there is a time to dance once again. The author continues, thus, I realize that the only worthwhile thing there is for them is to enjoy themselves and do what is good in their lifetime. Also, that whatever a person does, eat and drink and get enjoyment, it is a gift of God. I believe the lesson here is a reminder that oftentimes the realities of our world get in the way of the things that we enjoy. But our obligation is to keep our eye on the ball and to remember that there is a time when those things will return to us. 
in a folk story of Jewish tradition, King Solomon, who, uh, as we said, is the author of our Ecclesiastes text in our tradition, asked an artisan to craft a piece of jewelry that had inscribed upon it words of eternal truth. The artisan returns with a ring that has the words, Gamze Ya'avor, this too shall pass, etched in it. The artisan says that in moments of joy, King Solomon could look at the ring and appreciate the joy while knowing that it would not be eternal. And in moments of sadness, he could also look at that ring and know that that moment would pass. There is a season set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven. Perhaps more than any time in the last 10 months, we can see where those experiences may be returning. There will be a time for weeping, and there will also be times for laughing, times for crying and dancing. There will also be times for planting new relationships and for tending relationships and friendships that have been hit hard by the pandemic. There will be times for gathering up stones and for gathering together as a community once again. This new year, even as strange as it begins, will bring a variety of experiences. There will be a time for staying in and a time for going out, a time for masking and maybe, God willing, a time for unmasking, a time for mourning those who have died in this pandemic and a time for dancing as we hopefully return to a sense of normalcy. As we dream about what will change this year, we can hold Solomon's ring in our minds and on our hearts. We hold the moments of sadness, of sickness, of injustice, of inequity, of inequality, and look to a day when Gamze Ya'avor, when those things will have passed. And we look to the sweet things that have happened in this last year, and there have been sweet things this last year. And we recognize that they also may not always remain as we see vaccines arrive, can we ensure that at-risk populations are given the same access? Can our fellow humans come together and confront the global climate crisis as we return to traveling, to consuming, and to using? Will the frontline workers, who are often those with less economic mobility and stability, continue to be in the front of our mind? Or will we allow them to slip away into a distant memory covered by the haze of normalcy. Kohelet, Ecclesiastes, comes to us at this important moment because it serves as a reminder, not just of all that vanity, of all of the things that will fade away, it also reminds us of all of the things that will stay, even outlive us, that will outlive this moment. That is the call of today to find purpose in our actions and to rise to greet the experiences of this moment and this new year. As I look to my own daughters, as I look to the children who are campers at Camp Laurelwood, as I look to the children in the community where I live in Stafford, I see the value of this practice and its impact. It is clear to me why Ecclesiastes is looking for these juxtaposed moments of change. Just as the author of this sacred text, I see that my experiences will not all live on forever. But I also see in our children the future that does endure. The time for every purpose under heaven. The adaptation and flexibility to recognize that gamze ya'avor, that this too shall pass. That no moment lasts forever, but every relationship Every elevation of humanity will. No matter what else happens in my life, the most important thing I will ever do is raise my daughters. And as Jen and I often say, we are confident that they will change the world if we can all just survive raising them. I invite you to approach this new year with a sense of purpose to find that piece of Ecclesiastes that calls to you and to remember that whatever experiences we are having at this moment, there is still time 
for other experiences. In fact, as Kohelet reminds us, there is a time for every experience under heaven. Thank you. I We come now to the time of prayer. So you can go ahead and begin to share in the comments on Facebook and YouTube the names of anyone or a world event or issue of our time that you would like us to raise up in prayer. But please remember that this is a public forum and so only first names are needed. Our God knows who they are and what they need. And now, friends, won't you please join me in the spirit of prayer. You promise us, O God, that you are with us in all the seasons of life, at the beginning and at the end. And throughout it all, you offer us continually a chance to start again. We can always be our better selves in the next day, the next hour, the next moment. You see us as the whole person we can be, and you help us to be who you call us especially as we step across the doorway into a new year. So in 2021, we bring to you the names and the situations of others for whom light seems to be a stranger. Those who struggle with ill health, economic hardship, broken and damaged relationships, the loss of loved ones, those who are missing human touch and the loneliness of isolation, who suffer from depression and anxiety. We have lost so many due to COVID, oh God, but also to tragedy, to violence, to self-harm, to addiction, to illness. We place all of them and us in your care. Let your light shine on us, bringing healing and hope. Help us to be bearers of that light in all that we do. So hear the good news of the psalmist's proclamation. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you, O God, and the night is as bright as the day. 
The God who promised never to leave us or forsake us has come to us in Jesus Christ, who binds up the brokenhearted, heals our infirmities, and relieves our burden of sin. So arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Thanks be to God. Amen. We move now to the time of offering. Lord Jesus, you showed us that nothing can stop your coming into the world and into our lives if we but follow the star to come and see. May we open our hearts wide to you and give now back to the world unafraid, trusting that the more we give, the more you will provide for all of us. So my friends, we invite you who are watching this live stream to give as you are able to support the staff and the ministries of this church, either by mailing your pledges to us or um, by the electronic ways we are making available to you now in the comments of our live stream broadcast. Please continue to give of your time, your volunteering, and your help to people in need throughout our community, to your neighbors, to your family. And all these things together with your donations become our gifts offered up to our God this day. O God of new beginnings, may the light of Emmanuel, God with us, surround these gifts. Bless them and make them your healing presence in the light of the world. Amen. Please join with me now in singing the praise to our God that we sing in the doxology. We come now to the time of communion, and so I invite you to prepare your table that you may join yours with mine here, and together across the distance we may come before the Lord. So please gather your elements, uh, a piece of bread, uh, perhaps some crackers, an English muffin, anything that you may have, and put it on a little plate, and then bring together something for your cup, a glass of wine, a cup of grape juice, or anything that may become the cup of blessing for you. If you can, set a cloth or a candle or a flower, something to make your altar special. And let us enter in now to the time of communion. So friends, let us get into the presence of our God. The Spirit comes to us with unexpected brightness, often answering unspoken prayers. Any light, a winter window, an open door, a table candle, an evening star, can be a palpable sign of God's presence, calming our fears and strengthening our resolve, protecting us from despair. Still, we seek an inner light for our inward bleakness sometimes. Still, we long to know the shining of the risen one among us, with us. So gathered here at our table, we risk the hope that people with God's light in them can remake their lives with a bit of bread, and a shared cup, that nothing is lost forever and that nothing is impossible with God. We seek a connection beyond understanding, a gleam of holiness in the bread of the promise and the cup of joy. Now here at First Church, our table is open, which means if you are hungry for the holy, you are welcome. So let us begin. Nothing earthly mine. 
Please join me now in the prayer of confession. The words will be on your screen. Light of the world, you gave us the transforming birth of the child Jesus as a light for our path. Yet we confess that we shut our eyes to that light. We admit that we do not want to see the gift you have given us. We acknowledge our reluctance to see and share our gifts with our sisters and brothers. We are often distracted by the glitter and the tinsel the world has made of Christ's birth. We ask that your spirit be lit within us so that we may share your gifts of peace and joy with all people. We seek to receive the gifts of Christ's birth, teaching, death, and resurrection again and again. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance from our God. The God who promised never to leave us or forsake us has come to us in Jesus Christ, who binds up the brokenhearted, heals our infirmities, and relieves our burden of sin. So arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Thanks be to God. Now let us say together the prayer that Jesus gave us to say, and please use the words that are comfortable for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, please, will you join me in the litany of remembrance and consecration. Your part will be on the screen. God of light, in whom there is no shadow, your gifts to us are from the very beginning of time. They began with creation, when your spirit gave form to the chaos of energy and matter, and when your word brought forth light on the face of the earth. They continue with our ancient ancestors like Noah, whom you blessed with the promise signified by the colorful prism of light in the rainbow. And like Sarah and Abraham, whom you blessed with a child whose descendants, as many as the stars of the sky, were to be the light to the nations. And in the desert, you gave the gifts of manna and of living water to the weary pilgrims, whom you led by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. At last, you sent your light into the world in the form of a tiny child, fragile and vulnerable, who grew to be the very light of light, full of grace and truth, revealing your glory on earth. We thank you, O God, that you have sent Jesus Christ to bring life and immortality to light. Help us to receive your gifts with joy and humility. As we receive this bread and cup, may we open our hearts to receive your love and grace in Jesus Christ and receive the love and support of one another. Be born among us that we may give Christ's love to the world through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We remember and celebrate how God made his love known to us. Jesus lived among us and taught us to love God and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. But his clearest, most powerful act of love was his choice to lay down his life so that we might find ours. On the eve of his death, he gave us this sacred meal to remind us of all he did and said. While he and his friends were eating, he took the bread and he blessed it. And he raised it up to you, almighty God, and gave thanks and praise. And then he broke this bread and he offered it to his friends, saying, This is my body broken for you. Eat it as a way to remember me and my love for you. And after the meal, he took the cup that was filled with wine. He raised it to you, almighty God, and offered thanks and praise. He blessed it, and then he passed it among his friends, and he said to them, this is my blood poured out for you. Drink it as a way to remember me and my love for you. So now again, we eat and we drink, and we proclaim Jesus' birth and life and death his compassion, his justice, his mercy, and his resurrection. And we open our hearts to this love once more. 
Come, Holy Spirit, bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all who share at this table that our eyes might be open to see Christ ever newborn in our midst, indeed, in each other. Amen. And now, the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is now ready. Won't you take the bread that you have and share it as the bread of new life? Amen. And please lift now your cup of blessing in your home and share it among each other and drink it and remember Lord Jesus. And now please won't you join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. The words will be, on your screen. O God, who is revealed in simple, created things, we thank you for speaking to us through bread broken and juice poured. We thank you for the word of life planted like a seed in our hearts through this sacrament. On Christmas morning, we made room for the Savior in our hearts, and we praise you for coming near to us again, O Holy One, in this new year. May we find courage and faith to proclaim the good news he came preaching to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as our service draws towards a close, here are some announcements from our church life this week. We will not be holding our regular church school today due to the holiday weekend, but we will resume church school next weekend for grades K through five, and next Sunday will be our Epiphany service on January 10th. And that happens between 11 a.m. and 12 noon on Zoom, grades K through 5. And then we do offer a class for 6th and 7th grade youth twice per month. And our next class will be next week also, Sunday, January 10th at 12 noon on Zoom. To register for any of our classes and programs or to simply find out more about any of these, please watch your weekly e-newsletter from us or reach out to us at office at firstchurchlongmeadow.org. Finally, I want to thank Rabbi James Green for his preaching and his teaching of us this day. What a powerful way to welcome in the new year with his presence among us. And now we prepare to go forth. Won't you rise in body or spirit to sing out our closing hymn? The words will be on your screen. Thank you for being with us in worship today. Remember that I am here for you during the week, so please contact me by calling our church office or emailing me at office at firstchurchlongmeadow.org. Now, here's some words of blessing for sending out from our Rabbi James Green. Rabbi Nancy Fuchs Kramer, my teacher and colleague who has built her rabbinate around interfaith and multi-faith dialogue, 
wrote that in her extensive search, she did not find a blessing specific to interfaith engagement. This surprised her because in Jewish tradition, we often say that there is literally a blessing for everything. At the heart of interfaith engagement is our need for one another. It is not only the communities that need one another, but it is the friendships that are deep and meaningful and impact the larger community. As Rabbi Fuchs Kramer writes, quote, when we encounter our others, we learn what we could not have known if we had stayed isolated. We accomplish what is impossible without collaboration. We grow in ways we could not grow by ourselves. When we enter such an encounter, we can bless what we each lack, for it is that which brings us together. Rabbi Shefa Gold teaches that a blessing is made up of three parts, the intention setting, the act of prayer, and the mindfulness that follows as we notice the impact the prayer has on our soul. As Ecclesiastes invites us this morning to look beyond ourselves and toward the impact we can have if we live and engage purposefully, I want to send us off with a simple blessing that offers my gratitude for the opportunity to worship with you this morning, gratitude for the friendships I have shared within this holy congregation, and gratitude for the purpose with which you all at First Church act as a community of worship and practice. Blessed is God, who creates us varied and many, needing one another. Blessed are our traditions, varied and many, requiring each other. Blessed is our time together. May it provide nourishment for us and for our world. May we go forth with purpose and experience everything under heaven. Amen.